Hey, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles and do you remember this bike? We were talking about this bike when we were discussing the origins of purpose-built two-stroke dual sport motorcycles. That is not to be confused with converted street bikes or purpose-built competition motorcycles that people added lights on. So I think these Boltacos, these early model Matadors, are probably one of the earliest that fit that bill. Although maybe Greaves, but I think those were more competition. When I first showed you this bike and it wouldn't run, I thought maybe we had a restored trailer queen that was never ever run. And I don't think that's the case because it took almost nothing to get it going. I'm gonna show you that. But even before I was done, something bad or something wonderful happened. See, it gave birth. There's now two of them. Two, two 1966-ish Boltaco Mark II Matadors. And I bought this one because Man, for an unrestored bike, it's really right. Now, I shared this one online, and some folks chimed in. I wasn't offended, but they chimed in and said, yeah, those are the wrong foot pegs. Those are like Persang pegs. And ooh, the rear fender shouldn't have a bead on it, which is true, and oh, it's missing a decal. So let me caution you guys. If you're knocking your own bike, that's perfectly fine. If you're knocking a bike that's for sale, and it's not this, but if you're knocking a bike that's for sale, don't crap on the guy's listing. If you're being constructive, okay, but go back to the first rule. Don't crap on the guy's listing. If you're just there to criticize somebody else's bike so that you can sound smart, don't. Don't do that. Don't be one of those guys. Now, I wasn't offended. It was, I think he was being constructive. But let's look at these. We're gonna fire them up, but notice this one has buddy pegs. And I don't know if they were added. And those are the correct foot pegs, but they look like they were lengthened. Factory IRZ carburetor. And this early IRZ is actually a very simple carburetor. I know, because I had that one apart. This is probably the correct tail light. This is probably the hole for the mud flap. No bead. Oh. I gotta get my gas cap. So that's two of them. Let's see what they run like.
see if we can go 2-0. Let me tell you a little bit about this second one and why I bought it. First, just look at it. All the right patina. Now, I think I paid up for it. This is almost three grand. No title. It's gonna cost me another 400 bucks to hunt that down. But, Look how nice and straight the shouldered rims are. It's got the correct fenders, the correct carburetor, the correct air box. All the nice fittings are correct. I, I don't mind seeing some wear and tear in a tattered seat. It's the original seat. There's really nothing to knock on this bike. And I know most people would rather have one like that, all shiny, but I wouldn't. Because this bike won't own you. You'll own this. This bike, heck, I don't even know if I want to take it around the block. We probably will. Americans tend to like bling. I tend to like the unrestored stuff. The other downside on restored bikes, especially with English bikes, is that they'll have a mix of reproduction parts. So, like this is probably either made or repop. And on the English bikes, which are supposed to be Whitworth thread, you'll get a mishmash of American, Whitworth, and metric. Not as critical on the European bikes, which are all metric, but I'm not a fan of restored bikes. I'd rather see unrestored original, even if they're tatty. All right, so let's see. We can go do it all. What's wrong with that pickup? Here goes nothing. Did I say nothing? everything I said I like the shiny one better 